suit for me to know that the crisis is over so I can see we're not there yet. Kelly, I got luscious locks, but I'll toss the hood on for you. How are we? The <laughs> Fed has blown up our financial system. A hell of a Monday, huh? So do you think, okay, let me ask you to you this way or put it to you this way. A, a mm -hmm. banking crisis is deflationary. And so when I see Balaji and others saying Bitcoin's going to go to a million dollars, it may go up, but that may be because of the Fed's response here. The 2010s were not hyperinflationary. There's no obvious reason why now would be hyperinflationary either. Yeah. So, Kelly, it's it's actually not that complicated, and I'm excited to try and convey that to America. Uh, there's a market term that's used here in Chicago a lot is demand finds supply. What do I mean by that? If Ken Griffin is going to want to buy the most expensive condo in America, someone will build it for him. Someone will put a 201st floor in Miami's tallest building. If silver is going to 1,000 X, I will walk into my kitchen right now. I will melt all my silverware and I will sell it at market. If gold is going to rally, Elon Musk will find more on Mars. Bitcoin is, this is a super important point. Bitcoin is the only monetary instrument in the history of our species that is fixed. It does not matter how much more demand comes into the asset class, Kelly. No one will ever be able to make more of it. There are two things I can guarantee you in my life. One, that I'll die, and the other, that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. And those are what's the two things that I can only value as my life and my Bitcoin. So it is the only fixed supply asset, Kelly. It's not that complicated. It's going to go up because everything else can be issued more. Does that why make is sense? It, why, you've got to explain to me one thing. Why is the supply fixed? And, and is that because someone says it's fixed? who could change their mind? No, it's a great point and question, Tyler. Uh, it's because it's written in the software and the software is distributed. There is no one person to ask. There is no one person to trust. The whole decentralization, is it decentralized so that you could put pictures and NFTs on the blockchain? Is it decentralized so that you could fix gaming? No, it's decentralized so that the defendants of the monetary policy are distributed, is so that it's a network of computers that actually defend the policy and the instrumentation of the monetary asset. That is not the case for Ethereum. That is not the case for any other altcoin. That is not the case for the U.S. But, dollar. That is not but, the case for Miami real estate. That is not the case for precious metals. It is the, o it is the only monetary instrument that has its monetary policy distributed and defended forgive in a sound me for being way. dense so but, you but if you, you say that mm -hmm. that it's it's because this is the way the software is written and it is immutable it is unchanged why couldn't the software be rewritten or why couldn't the authors uh, of the software or the guardians of the software write a new software that creates bitcoin 2.0 uh, uh with a with a with another supply of fixed supply of Bitcoin. Yeah. So Tyler, I run Bitcoin software uh, and someone tried to do this. I want you to Google Bitcoin cash after this interview is over. Someone said, I want to change the rules of Bitcoin. I may want to create more of a supply. I may want to make it faster. I may want to make it do a backflip. I may make it want to store pictures of monkeys drooling on themselves on the blockchain. And they created it and they created new rules and they called it Bitcoin Cash. It's a different asset. It's a different instrument. And when someone tries to pay me in it, my software rules that I run in my home in a room over there says, nope, that's invalid. That thing is a piece of poop and I don't accept it because it is invalidating the rules of the system that were set out by Satoshi Nakamoto over a decade ago. So you create whatever you want. You want to create FedNow coin, flip a Dookie coin. I don't care. There's 21 million of the things that mm -hmm. I run mm -hmm. and that I protect mm -hmm. and that I save in. And those rules were started a long time ago. And that's what the network runs. So if you change mm -hmm. the rules, you're creating a different monetary asset and a different instrument. It doesn't matter. Jack, did you guys have any effect from SVB's collapse? I know, like you said, you're in Chicago. I don't know if you had any exposure there as sort of a startup or obviously I would imagine uh, maybe some other, you know, colleagues, clients, you name it. Uh, what do you make of all this? Um, well, it doesn't matter, right, Kelly? Because the U.S. government, you either got to default on it or deflate it. And so they're backstopping everything. The spigots are wide open. Uh, money printer is going burr. So it doesn't matter where your monies are held is that uh, the government's going to make you hold on it no matter what. So who cares? Uh, the only thing that's clear to us and clear to our customers is you cannot hold and save in dollars anymore. I think that there's going to be a new era of the U.S. dollar where inflation will enter a normalized 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. The days of 2 percent inflation are over. What the if Fled, you're wrong, the Jack? Because really the, blew this thing the market up. as you you know, the market is telling us we've gone from having, you know, expected three and a half percent inflation last year 
to just over 2% now for the next five years. Again, it's the op it doesn't see inflation accelerating and picking up from here. Look at the swap lines we just instituted over the weekend. The, it reiterates the dollar's dominance in the global financial system. And if anything, we're going to be averaging inflation for the next decade that probably looks a lot more like the 2010s we just came from. It was not inflation. And Bitcoin still did very well, by the way. It was not an inflationary period. Yeah, but Kelly, the, the swap lines and treating these assets at par that these banks are holding is a load of crap. It's a politically correct way. The swap lines over the weekend were a politically politically correct way going into an election year for the Federal Reserve to bail out foreign big institutions and not take care of the little guy in the United States of America. Those things aren't trading at par. If they're trading at par, when I walked down to my bank on the corner and I said, I want my money, they'd be able to hand it to me. They can't, Kelly. So this is just a masquerade load of nonsense. If you they, they have to backstop these things with new money and you're seeing risk on assets, you're seeing scarce assets yeah. actually be big winners here. So you could call it inflation because the CPI is a load of nonsense, right? Like the government's going to tell me how the dollar is inflating based on a basket of instruments. Like my Netflix subscription or my Caesar salad doesn't actually tell me how well the dollar is doing or how much it's being devalued. Miami real estate does. Bitcoin does. Bitcoin's up over 50 percent this year. Yeah. You're telling me that the dollar's not inflating? You're out of your mind. I'm not listening to that. The, the, the Fed and the whole monetary system is based on trust, and they constantly, they constantly break, uh, break that trust. It'd be the equivalent of there's a fire outside of my house. I smell the smoke, and someone's telling me, no, 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 it's just a bunch of teenagers putting on a bonfire. OK, but I hear one one siren. I hear one police siren. Yeah. Are you sure it's a bonfire? Yeah, yeah, it's a bonfire. Now I hear 10 sirens, 100 sirens. Now my whole community is running out. I'm not going to get up and look outside the window, Kelly, and see what's going on. I don't believe them for a second. You've got to be absolutely crazy to believe the Federal Reserve right now. They're full of it. And I don't have to because I own Bitcoin. There's no one that could deflate my instrument. I get to hold it, save in it. I know the monetary policy. I sleep like a baby, like the baby face that I am. Jack. I think you're crazy if you believe the Fed and these swap lines and treating these assets at par. It's a gimmick. It's a scam. We appreciate your time today. Jack Mallers right, of Strike.